Hi there, it's Paulie here. So, um, yes, Deadly Australian Wildlife. You keep seeing, um, there'll be these memes with someone holding like a little tiny feather tail glider, a little tiny possum this big, and it'll say, uh, not everything in Australia wants to kill you. Don't get me wrong, this one does, you just can't get around to it yet. Uh, it's kind of true, not true. Um, we kind of grow up with it. And if you, you have someone like me that kind of grew up, you know, bush areas, always surrounded by stuff, yeah, you're like, you, you learn from the cradle just to avoid stuff and avoid certain behaviors that kind of terrain holds a snake probably a snake over there don't turn that over there will be a spider i'll go looking myself sometimes if it's an area that's like yeah you know, oh, but I, we use sticks we're great users of sticks but i'll turn stuff over and find it uh, west australia where i live has some freaky stuff we got velvet worms which you might want to look up they're like literally one of the oldest creatures on the planet that is kind of like caterpillary things that um, project threads out of the front. We've got um, we've got some pretty crazy um, um, non-spider arachnids, whip spiders with kind of like folded front claws like a crab. Um, you can find them down south. Uh, crazy stuff. And we've got snakes. What is it? I think it's something like 29 of the top 30 most venomous creatures of the world. Right here where I'm sitting, baby. On the other hand, um, where I am, this is where the peacock uh, jumping spiders come from, uh, and quokkas, and all that sort of stuff. So what the hey. Um, take the rough for the smooth, but foreigners don't grow up with it. And um, yeah, you kind of need, <laughs> you definitely need a native guide. Otherwise, you're going to die. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's a, ooh, when I've been in Thailand, wandering around, uh, like I was in an elephant park we're looking for you know, we, I found elephants in the wild I was so happy yay Mrs. Snoots was happy too but um yeah there were uh, you're wandering around temples and all this sort of stuff and I, I was with these sort of Irish and English people and I had just kind of let these guys know that yeah we're in Cobra country they just hadn't seen them but I was, no no the reason the paths are so well mowed like when you go out to these old temples in the middle of nowhere the paths will be well mowed and the areas around the stones will keep the grass very flat so this keep snakes away um they don't want to expose themselves on the open you know during high visibility times of the day because you know that's when birds can take them so you know but that that's that's what the, that's there for that's to keep the cobras away so, yeah but there haven't been any <laughs> guide and i look at each other it's like well yeah they have we just didn't think it was worth remarking you could see one like you know oh yeah, there's one it's one way down the path kind of this way or that way so we just won't go that way um but yeah in the elephant park it does what do what do we do how do we know if there's snakes and uh, yeah this thai wildlife rangers well if you see the nice australian lady running like hell join them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like being used as a dowsing rod to see if something will bite you i think it's quite funny um wow some of the wildlife shit i was finding there you know cool beetles and totally camouflaged lizards clinging to temple walls and it was great but um <laughs> when i've had foreign friends come here it's been quite funny um we have uh we have a um uh, there's a type of what do you call them crayfish freshwater crayfish here we have many different species but the uh, west australia has a species which is the largest in the world uh you can you can tell them even when they're small because they have five ridges on the keel but uh, they're big they get like the size of a sea going lobster larger they're, they're like honking big huge things and um i, I actually kind of like them they're kind of they're just kind of a quiet thing but they're they're um they're a bit feisty they don't like you disturbing their um huh, they don't like you disturbing their wah man uh yeah i had a croatian <laughs> a croatian guy and <laughs> we're getting and he just decides he's going to jump into this this is kind of water hole there and uh, some old bits of like wood going in there so he decides to leap in there naked in the morning because he's at he is he's at one with the environment or whatever he jumps in and yeah this um crayfish uh <laughs> it was just slightly irritated at being disturbed i think so came rushing out of its like hidey hole like who's the hell in my territory and <laughs> this naked croatian man comes <laughs> raging through the camps and screaming it is here to cut it off it is here to cut it off what what <laughs> <laughs> oh you found that oh, okay no no it's not actually there for that but um this state on the on the um it's lethal uh yeah uh do ask the locals before you jump into that beautiful waterhole 
some of these water holes have um uh, amoeba in them that will basically eat your brain alive not joking amoebic um, meningitis comes from right here um <laughs> <laughs> yeah it doesn't have to be big to kill you folks um i have an english friend um toby of whom i have spoken a very brilliant and talented martial artist who's my kendo instructor for many many years he's so high ranked in the british kendo renmai which is a vicious vicious old um kind of pre-war kendo renmai so you know judo throws and all sorts of things it's like um, it's a great way to get concussions and broken bones but um yeah, he, he had some jobs up in the north of the state, which is a kind of a bit of a desolate hellhole. No, 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 no one lives up there. It's like, there's a whole area the size of like, you know, Texas, no one goes near. As indeed, no one should go near Texas. But um, yeah, he went up there and they've got this kind of, he's with these exploring uh, geologists that are, you know, looking for different things. They go up there and there is an old tin windmill on this old property and it just was and it's used to draw water up from a deep well which is just putting into this big old huge um water trough which you know runs about 20 or 30 feet and it's just there for wandering cattle and so on to take a drink from and you know sometimes the kangaroos and so on come up and have a drink from it as well local wildlife so toby gets up oh and it's just kind of like the dawn has just come oh the rosy light across the australian outback um huh some oh so he walked out just to commune man and nature and he said an eagle comes down oh I, the biggest thing i ever saw this immense eagle I said yeah that'll, that'll be a wedge tail eagle which is the logo it's the biggest eagle in the world that they are enormous um literally biggest eagle in the world so this thing swoops in whoosh, <clears throat> lands on the side of the trough and like ah oh, dips his beak in suddenly out of the trough <laughs> These jaws are up that just round this thing's head and then coil a snake just go rap, 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 and just drags this thing in the water and whoosh, water everywhere froth, 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 froth. and then it's still what the hell so, and i'm sort of laughing as he's telling me this in terror <laughs> says, yeah there was a boa under the water wasn't there so, yeah i look Oh, peeking for just us a snake. It's like about 30 foot long. It's like, it's eating an eagle. It says, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what can I say? Uh, well, that new stuff was there. So, uh, I, I don't think it'd have a go at you. So, uh, no, no, you know, it was just, there was nothing. So, yeah, yeah, they can hold their breath for about 20 minutes. So it'll just come up every now and then. Yeah. And then it's just going to lie there. Come on, something drink. Uh, Toby. Uh, they had like a, a little um sort of cantini thing where he was he's in the middle of spinifex country which is a type of um kind of densely packed kind of vertical brush with lots of little leaves and flowers all over it it's about kind of waist high but you know he's, he's been he's been there drinking with all of these guys and uh, you know at night and so he staggers out on a moonlit night and decides he's going to take a wee in the bushes so <laughs> zip and uh yeah he pees on the bush and terrified some frog which was just sitting there minding its own business being a frog but this thing leapt and landed on his crotch and just seizes onto his old fellow with um just a claw grip of iron some of these kind of arboreal things actually do have this amazing grip <laughs> uh, like a baby possum it's like <laughs> they can almost make your bones crack um but yes yeah, <laughs> and this this Finding guys are telling me tears in their eyes. He's, he's come bursting in, <laughs> wrestling with this frog that's attached to his, uh, attached to him, and <laughs> he finally gets it off, and this thing just takes off, and, oh, oh, and he's, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and <laughs> it's, he phoned me because these guys have took a wait, wait, what, what color was the frog? What, what color was the frog? Oh, black. Oh no. What? Oh, what do you mean? Oh no. Whoa. What you got there is the West Australian black cock frog. <laughs> um, well, you know how arrow frogs, like, they exude a toxin on their skin. Yeah, a necrotic toxin. You know, that's what these things have got. Um, you know, basically, it, it causes, uh, like, a, a flesh-eating bacteria. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, well, damn. Um, well, the earliest we could call for, like, any sort of evac is going to be tomorrow morning, you know. So that's the earliest we could get any sort of helicopter. <laughs> So he's called me. He's like, is there anything I should do? Oh. 
Now, what you've run into there is not a West Australian black cock frog. What you've run into there is a bunch of lying West Australian bastards who have seen a pommy and decided to have a very good time. Is it? You're fine. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> um, mind you, there is a local spider that uh, can bite you and uh, can... <laughs> you, you can get necrotic uh, bits of you falling off. But that's another tale. Um... Yeah, I had an Icelandic guy turn up. Now, that was like having my very own kamikaze. I've probably told you bits and pieces of these, but, you know, they're kind of worth stringing together. Um, this guy just, they don't have, like, spiders or snakes or anything in Iceland. It's too, just too damn cold. I think what they've got is the occasional dead whale washes up and, uh, you know, every now and then someone flattens a puffin and puts it between two bits of bread and eats it. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. So... I was like desperately running around just trying to stop this guy from being killed because um, he would just like start delving his hand into places where you're like, you don't do that here. Even my back garden, like there are things that, you know, we would just approach with, oh, there's a big pile of like fallen twigs and lumber. Oh, yeah, there'll be a snake in it. It's a, it's a suburban garden, but there's probably a Jewgite in it, which is like a, a slightly scaled down version of the immensely deadly brown snake. But, um... What the hell? Let's just let's just mow the grass around that and oh, let's not touch it. But we went down to the beach, and there's been a bit of a storm, so these Portuguese man of war have washed up on the beach, and um, um, the tentacles on these things are quite uh, quite large, um, like they extend for meters and meters and meters and meters, and they they kind of squiggle a bit. So he's just seen these, and they're kind of like oh, they're bright and interesting. They're kind of a translucent blue color. So he's just wearing. Um, um, we call them thongs, we call them flip-flops, like, you know, just, you know, plastic sandals with the thing over the toes. He just goes straight through all the tentacles, sinking into the sand, miraculously none of them touch the side of his feet, and just, it runs up and picks up one of the giant bells, and he's like, look, I found the Christmas decoration, like, put it down really slowly, and now I'm going to get a stick of driftwood, and I'm going to clear you a path, you're going to come on the path back to me, because if they touch your feet... Yeah, those tentacles and so on are still. I've, I've still got, I still got scars all over my wrist from just brushing one um, when I was about six. So you know, fifty-four years those scars have been there. But you know, somehow he's gone through. He has got me to photograph him. He waded out into the water once I made sure it was <sighs> animal free. And um, yeah, he's uh, he stood up to his neck in the ocean and just got me to take a photo of this in home so it's like, i need to send this to my family he says why is that well you must understand it is cultural i am in the ocean and i am not dead for my people a very unusual experience <laughs> yeah. up north yet yeah, there is something to say for going for a, a nice brisk dawn walk down by some of the remote beaches area look and there's like two halves of a shark washed up and just an ung might bite in the middle of the thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw a water crocodile just got just <laughs> bitten one of those things in two. It's like, yeah, you see the big signs that say no swimming. Yeah, they really mean that. Um, yeah, there's this Icelandic guy. He's just like, look, I found the animal. He's got like a red back spider, which is kind of like a black widowy thing. Like he's just got to keep your hand still, put it on the ground blow like that and get it the hell off your hand as quickly as humanly possible why well that's a deadly spider oh what happens if you're bitten by a deadly spider well you die that's what the deadly in the name means actually a, a full adult redback won't kill you it'll make you sick for a few days it'll kill a kid and they're everywhere uh yeah he would pull spiders off of trees like we get some quite big um um, what do you call orb weavers and they're beautiful they're, they're they're they look like a tiger they're orange with kind of um black stripes on them just faintly outlined in white and then their their tummies are actually white they're the most stunningly beautiful um things i've ever seen um but you know and and they're big they're about the size of your hand you know oh look i've got that don't piss off the things with fangs oh this one has bit me and now i'm in pain yeah well um, this area does have beautiful things. I mean, this is where clockers come from. Um, peacock jumping spiders, me, 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 with all the beautiful um, um, dancers and so on. That's in my garden. That's that's where these are from. So, <laughs> but yeah, having these kamikaze guys running around with you, um, 
and and you know i've told again i've probably told this one before but it's worth explaining i'm not just going to prey on other people i am an idiot and therefore i will always tell you tales of how much of an idiot i am so i was raised here in western australia <clears throat> there are no koalas on this half of this truly immense continent and they never will be because between us and the east there's the nullabore desert null abor no trees just like it's like driving from uh, California to New York and just desert in the middle. <laughs> and when I mean desert, I mean capital D desert. Um, but on the east coast with the forests and so on, I got there. That's where koalas are. So I was in high school. Uh, I'd been you know, raised over here, but I'm, I'm over east. We go off camping. Now, discovered H.P. Lovecraft novels. So I'm there with some friends and we've been at a camp, camping in the middle of nowhere. Um, in fact, camping at Stall. If you've ever seen the movie Gallipoli, it starts with them in a foot race at Stall. Yep, that's where we were. Um, but we're reading H.P. Lovecraft novels by, by the firelight, um, alone, in the mountains, surrounded by the dense forest, with no real moon. Okay. Getting a bit nervous here, but what the hell, you know, so that's okay. Ha ha ha. You're teenagers, you can take anything. And then we go to sleep. Well, there's koalas in the area. So suddenly you hear like a faint rustle in the bushes in just the total still of night. And then there's a sound like a saber-toothed tiger on steroids. And yeah, uh, a group of 14, 15 year old um, um, school kids just take off at a run. Raw terror, like something's coming to uh, essentially uh, make snacky poos off your jugular. And as we finally got out, a little bit of moonlight comes through the clouds and we see a koala walking down the path look them up online these things have the most horrifying yells um absolutely wet ourselves um so yeah anyway australian wildlife look america has bears i guess so it's like you got that uh but uh yeah we do we, we do have lots of stuff that can take a chunk out of you um and uh yeah Oh, you got anti-venom? Yeah, in the hospital. In fact, Australia invented anti-venom. This is where it came from. This is where the whole industry, the world industry is based. Again, right here. Um, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, for a reason. But what happens if you get bitten by a deadly snake? You die. That's what the deadly in the name means. <laughs> we, we could, were we not clear? We got to start labeling the sides of some of these things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> please annoy other end of this animal oh okay <laughs> wait or don't uh anyway anyone ever turns up <laughs> show you around <laughs>